One of the exciting projects recently completed by the AEWC Composite Center is the reconstruction of the Neal Bridge. In October of 2008, the rigidified inflatable composite arches developed at the University of Maine were installed in Pittsfield, Maine as part of a project replacing a 70-year-old, 35-foot long by 44-foot wide concrete bridge. This bridge is the first of its kind and was built in cooperation with the Maine Department of Transportation. The arches were constructed in the AEWC Composites Lab on the University of Maine campus, but for future projects it is expected that arches will also be fabricated at the bridge site. The arches will arrive rolled up to the site, will be inflated, placed over a mold, shaped to any geometry, infused with resin, and then allowed to cure or harden for three hours. The arches have three functions. They act as a stay-in-place form for concrete, an exoskeleton reinforcement for the concrete so that no rebar are needed, and a protective layer for the concrete. These features have been tested in the lab. During the accelerated fatigue testing, concrete-filled arches were subjected to the equivalent of 50 years of truck traffic over an interstate highway bridge. Results show that the arches retained their full capacity after the fatigue tests were completed, proving that the residual strength of the arches was equivalent to the initial strength of the arches. Moreover, testing has shown that these arches are extremely ductile compared to conventional reinforced concrete. The arch structure forms three plastic hinges and maintains peak loading during strength testing. The arches for this bridge project have a 12-inch diameter and span 35 feet. 23 arches were built for use in the 44-foot wide Neal Bridge. The arches were trucked to the construction site from U Main and lowered into place with a simple boom. Once lowered down the embankment, final placement was easily performed with hand labor without heavy equipment. All 23 arches were placed in a single workday, greatly reducing the time that is normally required for setting up formwork. Once precisely in place, the base of the arches were encased in a shallow concrete footing. Composite corrugated decking was placed over the empty arches using self-drilling screws. The self-drilling screws become concrete anchors once the arches are filled with concrete. The arches were filled with a self-consolidating, expansive concrete mix through individual holes located in the top of each arch. The aggregate time it took to fill all 23 arches with concrete was only about one hour. Concrete was also placed over the corrugated decking, which together with the concrete anchors form a lateral force resisting diaphragm. The day after the concrete was poured, composite spandrel walls were erected. A granular sand backfill was placed and compacted on top of the arch structure, and the bridge was paved. Conventional bridge rails were set in place before the road was reopened for traffic. Sensors were installed to allow humane researchers to monitor the performance of the bridge. This jointless, rebar-free bridge is designed to last significantly longer than conventional construction, and it does so with little maintenance. With this new design, both the life cycle cost and carbon footprint of bridge construction are reduced. The bridge in a backpack superstructure has 50% of the annual carbon footprint of a comparable precast concrete superstructure. Even though this bridge is the first of its kind, its installed cost was 5% less than the cost of a conventional bridge. With economies of scale, it is expected that the installed cost of the bridge will be up to 20% less than conventional designs. This flexible design may be thought of as a faster, more durable, and more economical way to build a concrete bridge. It can be adapted to a variety of conditions, spans, and geometries, allowing the construction of highway overpasses and underpasses, rigid frame structures, integral abutment bridges, and railroad bridges.